Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raider Sport. Friendly reminder that this video was made and recorded on Tuesday. So if anything crazy happens, please don't get upset with me. It's just the way that my schedule ends up working. Today's show is presented by Locals. And if you want even more Raiders content, please go to RaiderSupport.Locals.com. It's just for diehard fans only. If you're not a diehard fan, I'm not going to get mad at you. But hey, I'm just letting you know. Let's go to MM and L77. Do you think McDaniels will use Drake as a second slot with D. Wall and Devontae Adams on the outside? Honestly, no. And the only reason why I say that is because Kenyon is a good player, okay? John Gruden wanted too much out of Kenyon Drake, which I get that Drake has had some pass-catching ability, but to me, he was always a good all-around running back. I'm He's not a good enough receiver, to take targets away from other receivers that we have. If they need to use them here and there, sure, you go for it. But, I mean, I said it the day that the Raiders signed them. I had a lot of fun on the Kenyon Drake show. But to give Kenyon Drake a lot of targets, uh, I'm going to go with no. What up, Lewis? Where do you think OBJ will end up playing this year? Just curious. Well, I actually made a video on Chat Sports last week where I predicted where Odell Beckham Jr., Julio Jones, Anthony Barr... I'm trying to think. Some other players as well. And I had OBJ just signing with the Los Angeles Rams. I mean, I, and J.C. Treader. So if you guys want to check out that video, it's YouTube.com slash ChatSportsTV. But I had OBJ just playing with the Rams. To me, it just made the most sense that he just had a good year. They won a Super Bowl. It seems like the Rams want him back. They just got to get a familiar number. But I was also told that OBJ might not be ready for week one. What up, Jake? Did you see that Carr wasn't ranked in the top 10 quarterbacks by execs, coaches, and players article by ESPN? Yeah, I actually talked about this a little bit on our rumor show on Tuesday for those of you that aren't watching this live. And this is what the quarterback rankings were. So you had Rodgers at one, Mahomes, Allen, Brady, Burrow, Stafford, Herbert, Wilson, Watson, Prescott. If I'm being honest with y'all, I don't really have that big of a problem with this list. Can I make an argument for Carr being a top 10 quarterback? Yes, I can make the argument, however, if I'm being 100% transparent and honest with y'all, he's like number 12 for me right now. He definitely has the upside. I have put money on him to be an MVP dark horse, but I don't really think that it's that crazy that he's not in the top 10. But what do you guys think here? Is Derek Carr a top 10 quarterback? I know most of y'all's votes are going to come in for a Y for yes, which is totally fine. But this show is about honesty, and if you honestly think that, then please type your why. But also do not be afraid to type your end for no, because the only way we get better as a show, as a nation, as a group, is if we're honest with each other. So is Derek Carr top 10 quarterback? Let me know. Let's go to Highlight King. What up, my man? Do you think Crosby will become the best edge rusher in Raiders history? Wow. Um, there's a lot of really good names, right? When I think of the best defensive end for the Raiders, and you guys can correct me if you want, I know Greg Townsend is the sack leader. Howie Long, though, to me, was really, really dominant. I do think this, though, if Crosby can play for a long time, right, because longevity goes into this, he has the upside to do it. There's no doubt about it. And I think if he keeps trending in the right direction, the answer to that is yes. And if he stays healthy... The answer to that is yes, but I can't sit up here and say that he's going to do it. What well, Do I think he's going to be top five, though? Yeah, yeah, I do. Madman Raider, what will it take to get Nelson Aguilar? You know, Nelson Aguilar has been a name that's been thrown out there for NFL trade candidates, Raiders trade candidates on top of that, and I think, honestly, if you wanted to get Nelson Aguilar, throw out like a fifth-round pick right now, you could get him. You'd have to pay him 9 or $10 million this upcoming season. The Patriots don't want him. They just released or they just traded the way into Keel Harry. If you're watching us on Tuesday, they traded the way into Keel Harry to the Bears for a seventh rounder. So if you want Nelson Aguilar, yeah, I'd say a fifth round pick could make it happen. But I also think there's a part of me that wouldn't be surprised if the Patriots tried to release Aguilar because right now he'd probably be their fourth maybe fifth option in that offense and to pay somebody 10 million dollars to be your fifth option is a little bit of an overpay so don't be surprised if you see some trade rumors out there and if nobody's willing to make that trade 
The Patriots just release them. They eat $5 million. They save $10 million, and then you just kind of go on from there. What up, our dog underscore 76? Mitch, you keep saying you don't trust the secondary. What if McDaniel's plan is a two-year plan, first year to get guys up to speed, second-year Super Bowl? How does it look then? I mean, if Super Bowl is the second year, it looks great, right? I mean, the issue is you can't guarantee me a Super Bowl. And you go out there and you look at a lot of other people who aren't Raiders fans, and I'm talking ESPN, NFL, PFF, CBS. There's not a single person that has the Raiders ranked higher than number 20 for secondary. Hell, there's a lot of people that have the Raiders secondary in the bottom five of the NFL. There's a lot of unknowns there, and that's one of the reasons why the confidence level isn't there because of the amount of unknowns. Do I think that there's talent? Yes, but the Raiders secondary can get better. It needs to get better, and I'm hoping that it does get better. Now, if you guys are diehard fans, and if you're like, well, why should I subscribe? It's July. You're right. I keep you up to date. News, rumors in July. That's all important. But during the regular season, during preseason, we do these things called watch parties where I go live for every single game. So I get it. Tickets, man, they're, they're hella expensive. And if you can't make it out to a Raiders game, but you still want to have that Raiders feel of a tailgate, of a party, of just a bunch of people getting together, having a good time, subscribe to the Raiders Report, turn on those notifications. Because during game days, dude, we get 100,000, 150,000 people. They will come across this YouTube channel, and they will tune in, and they will watch what we're doing. So if you want a way to just have a good time with the nation during the regular season, all I suggest you do, hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. Now, not only are we on YouTube, we're also on Locals. So Locals is a really cool opportunity for me where they're paying me to make even more exclusive videos for Raider Nation. So I made a video like this when the Raiders released Stanford Samuels. We talked about Devonta Adams. I talked about how that move could potentially lead to something like Indomitian Sue. I've also made a video like history suggests that Josh Jacobs will not lead the Raiders in rushing in 2022 i also made a video that espn suggested the raiders should do this one move at the end of the day locals is for people who want to know more and if you want to learn more if you want to listen to a video that's kind of more of like a podcast style that you don't have to watch the video you can just put it in your pocket do whatever the hell you're doing for the rest of your day then i suggest you join our locals community at raidersreport.locals.com or just scan that qr code let's go to james what up my bro super chat time Warm Bud Light is worse than John Elway as a motivational speaker. <laughs> Raiders! So here's the thing, though. If I chug Bud Light, then it's not bad. Because if I chug a beer, it has to be warm. And when you chug, it's not about how it tastes. It's about how quick it goes down. Because if I chug a cold beer, if I do a cold boot, oh, dude, that's it's so painful. And try to chug three cold beers back to back to back and tell me how you feel. Let's go to Brian Dar. What up, my dog? Can you give my five-year-old a shout-out? Is it a Emelyn? Emelyn Dar. every time I listen to you, she yells Mitchell Renz. Am I saying that right, Sam? Emelyn Dar. Emelyn Dar. Brian, you got to let me know if I'm pronouncing that right. Man, I hope... How about this, Brian? If you can get that on video of her yelling Mitchell Renz, tag me on IG. I mean, those are the type of shit that uh, I love to share. That's the type of stuff that I love to like put on my Instagram stories. Probably should not have just sworn there because your daughter's watching, but uh, it's on me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit myself for that one. Let's go to Sam. What up, Sam? You can also blame David Zahn for all the beer boots at this point. The Chiefs could cut Josh Gordon. Would you be open to bringing him to the Raiders? Um. I understand that the when Josh Gordon was cut, the team that always was willing to bring him back was New England, right? 2018, 2019. I want to say in 2019 he had like 40 grabs, 700-something yards, three touchdowns when he ended up getting field stretcher. The issue is this. I would think that he would learn a little bit from being with the Chiefs. Like that knowledge of him being with the Chiefs would actually be more interesting to me bringing that over to the Raiders, but the other part is this. Actually, how about this? I'll let you guys answer this question, and then I'll give my answer. If Josh Gordon is cut by the Chiefs, should the Raiders sign him? Type S for sign, type P for pass, because I've seen reports out there that, yes, uh, Kansas City could potentially move on from Gordon. 
The reason why I'm going to type P for pass is because the Raiders have dealt with so much drama last year, the year before that, and I don't know if he's going to actually bring that much talent at this current juncture in his career to have it be worth it. He might not ever do anything, but to me, I know there's going to be extra drama there. For, so for that, I'll type B for pass. If we don't spend any of our cap space on free agents, would you front load Waller's extension to take up most of this year's cap? It's an interesting idea. I mean, I would say this. I've been told that the Raiders aren't going to have a lot of money in next year or the year after that in terms of being able to spend money because of how many bad contracts they have had in previous Gruden years, we'll say, from free agents and trades that they've made. But um, you could potentially front load Darren Waller's contract, yes. What up, Nikki? I think Abram kills it as a box safety this year. I hope you're right. I hope Jonathan Abram kills it. I hope he has a stellar year. I hope he has a career year. And I hope that he has such a good year that the Raiders want to bring him back in 2023. The issue is this. Being a box safety is important. But being a safety in the NFL, being anybody in the, in, on defense in today's NFL, you got to be able to cover. And Jonathan Abram is a liability in coverage. What up, Will Dunn? Hey, Mitch, I heard the Browns might look to trade Greedy Williams. What do you think of giving up a fourth or a fifth rounder for him? Yes, I would do it. I liked Greedy Williams a lot when he was coming out of LSU. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. I've been drinking a lot of beer. Uh, I thought Greedy was an interesting prospect. He was long, he was lanky, he was raw, and he might not get all the opportunities that he deserves in Cleveland because that defense is pretty solid, especially at the cornerback position. But, uh, yeah, I would do a fourth or fifth round pick for Gritty Williams. Absolutely. What up, real court? The Raiders need a defensive tackle. Could Tristan Hill be an option? So, it's kind of funny. You know, I talked to Tom Downey, was it yesterday, about Tristan Hill. And I was like, Tom, give me a trade idea for Tristan. And he was like, dude, I would throw you a washing machine. So, I was like, all right, well, how about a seventh round pick? So, I was like, all right, that's kind of interesting to me. So, if the Raiders got Tristan Hill, the Cowboys got a seventh round pick. Would you do this trade? Now, this is one of these dudes who has never lived up to the hype, which there's no doubt about that. But get your votes in right now. Who wins this trade? Type LV for the Raiders. Type DAL for the Dallas Cowboys. And if I can get a seventh rounder for Tristan Hill, do I think he's a great player? No. But do I think he could give us a little bit more depth on our defensive tackle? Sure. We got Gene Bice. Mitch. How many yards will Carr throw for and how many touchdowns do you project? You know, to be honest, I don't really care that much about yards, but I'm going to project 4,400 yards for D.C. this upcoming season. What I'm hoping is he sets a career high, and I'm hoping he breaks the Raiders' single-season record for most touchdowns in a season. I want 35 touchdowns, I believe, with Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro, Devontae Adams that you should be able to throw for 35 touchdowns. Hell, if Kirk Cousins is throwing for 35, 33 touchdowns over the last two seasons, why can't Derek Carr? What up, Karen? Uh, does Chuck the Pup watch our Raiders games with you? Does he watch the Raiders games? Maybe. I know he watches the Raiders report. Hell, I'm not kidding you when I say this. When I leave for work, when I go anywhere, we turn the Raiders report on, my girlfriend and I, and we let that shit play. We let it play. We let it keep going. We let the party going. Let's go to A-Rod. Who would be a surprise cut and a surprise player to make the team? Surprise cut, Denzel Good. And the reason why I say that is because of his contract. You can save the entire thing. And if you're confident that maybe John Simpson can start, maybe you're confident Dylan Parham can start, maybe you're confident Leatherwood and um, also Brandon Parker, then who knows? Maybe you're able to move on from Denzel Good, save you know almost $4 million dollars. Surprise player to make the team would be a Meek Robertson for me. What up, John Lord? $20 soup. What up, Mitch? What made you a Raiders fan? Thanks for the content. What made me a Raiders fan is honestly covering the team. I wasn't born into any fandom team. I never really had a favorite team growing up. And then I met so many diehard fans. And then the very first time I went to a Monday night football game, Raiders versus Broncos back in 2019, just being around people. And that's the God honest truth. Like I'm a big family guy. I love my family to the end of the world, and the more and more Raider fans I met, the more and more it was like a family. So for that atmosphere, that's what made me a Raider fan. I'm a Raider fan more because of the nation and because of the people that rep the shield more than the players every day of the week, which is why I'll go to bat for the nation 
and the fans more than I will for players. But shout out to you, John. All right, y'all, if I missed your question on today's show, please hit me up, Instagram, Twitter, at MitchellRent365. I appreciate everyone who tuned into our live show today. I am getting ready to wrap this thing up, but it's because I have to pee really, really bad, and that's me being very transparent with y'all. So shout out to all y'all, and remember, if I missed your question, hit me up, IG, Twitter, at MitchellRens365.